Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. Congratulations on a really wonderful, powerful film. Thank you so much. Maybe you could just start by telling me what inspired this story? Why did you want to make this film? Do you know, it was because I met a Pablo, uh, Pablo who told me his story. And at the beginning it was because that coming out story is not really interesting mm -hmm. for me at that moment. But it was very interesting, made up uh, a gay man, homophobic at the same time. And when I started to listen to this story, I couldn't find another layer, and, and this layer was misogyny. Because it wasn't, even if he talks very well about his wife, he was just using this wife to cover him, himself. And, and I was, start more interesting about that and so I, I, I made a, a big research to understand if there is other Pablos in Guatemalan society and I found a lot and and thanks to the others I found to people who leave therapies to stop to be gay and and this therapies was very very hard and very, very um, varied. So I, my, my real problem with the therapy was how I can show to be realistic because my, my preoccupation at the beginning was people don't be believe that that exists. Because I, wa I, I was not, I was so shocked. When I, when I start uh, looking for and, and understanding these this processes. Mm. So did it take a lot of research? Because I, I feel in the film we're so immersed in this community. You know, we go inside the spaces of the church, we're around the dinner table with the family. So, you know, does it take a lot of research to kind of bring that to life in an authentic manner? Yeah, I, uh, I really make three years researching. And at the beginning it was easy, and I was very happy doing that, and I'm, I took a therapy myself, and I was into the community and doing that. And, but after that, my, my last film became very famous, and people uh, started to recognize me, uh, and they put me out. <laughs> and, broke your cover. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so after that, I just continued to, to talk with people. And, and after that, I stopped to, to look for homosexuality problems because, because the film is more la than that and the film is talking about oppression. So I, I started to, to talk with women and to talk with all the people oppressed by religion. And how, because it's very strange when you are talking about religion and God and spirituality and faith that normally you, you are talking about nice things but these people when they are not just talking about spirituality they took it like dogmas and rules and oppressing and judging others and, and I, I just took this way at the end in my in my research and you've got a really incredible cast um particularly juan as, as pablo um in what how did you come across these actors and put them together and how did you work with him to bring out what i see as like quite a, a nuance really because because of this inner conflict he has uh, he doesn't really know um if he should lean more towards his traditional values, his religion, his commitment to his family, or if he wants to be with Francisco and be liberated and, you know, be closer to his true self. So, you know, how did you work with him to bring that character? It was very interesting with my... In Guatemala, there is not a, a real uh, movie industry. So there is not actors for movies. There is a lot of actors for, for theater or... And Juan Pablo was one of the most famous actors in Guatemala. And, and to me it was um, a very big challenge because I, I asked to him, can you come to my film and pretend don't be an actor and just 
came and make a, a formation with me and, and follow my system with other non actors that they are choosing the processes to be professional. And he accepted. Uh, and he was so open and it's very important because I think Juan Pablo is a is a real man who is sure about his own sexuality. So that give him a lot of freedom and security to play a, a, a gay man, like an heterosexual, I mean. It feels to me that the visual aspects were very important. The sort of color palette that you use um, sort of really makes us feel like we're there when we're in the church, when we're um, in, in the apartment with Pablo and Francisco. And also the kind of way you use physicality, you know, we do kind of see Pablo in all these different spaces in the kind of sort of more affluent, sort of prudish um, uh, community and then when he's in the gay community. So was the visual aspect very important for you? Yeah, I wanted to make a very classic film. It, uh, it was a choral film with a lot of cast. And, and I was based in, in films from the, from the 17th, and it's a period that I love in American uh, cinema. So I wanted to treat all the Pavlos and Issa world uh, by this uh, influence. And for Francisco world, this, this more uh, free world, I was inspired by all the Japanese classic films because there is a lot of filmmakers that, that I love in, in Japanese films who came from documentaries. And there is this kind of make a documentary but always aesthetic and always nice with light. And, but you, you can feel the truth there. So we use with my cinematographer these two references and we just put it inside. And, and we just said, don't be afraid about aesthetic. Aesthetic can be nice. And it does feel like we're in a bit of a moment in terms of diversity of stories we put up on the screen, LGBT themed movies. There's even been a couple recently about gay conversion therapy in the US, which have some overlap perhaps. So what do you think is important about that? And for you, what do you think the importance of this film can be to maybe change people's minds, change perspectives? You know, I, I wanted to talk about oppression. Uh, an oppression, all these Pablos that I met were very worried saying, I don't understand why people don't like me because just I am. And there is not people who commit some uh, violent act. There is not people who are senior. There is just people who exist. And, and in Guatemala, the, Homosexuality is used like um, a courting smoke, what do you say that? You know, when politics, politicians use homosexual just to, to create a, a noise mm. when there is a big problem. So in Guatemala, if, if politicians said homosexuality and abort, people coming out to say, no, 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 hell, hell and and they forgot the other thing. So I think this kind of society who oppress the, the, the community, the, 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 the country, don't want to lose this kind of weapon. And I don't want to be proud of, of these people because they can use it for other things too. I don't know if I explained very well my point. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, and also, the, do you think that it, we're making progress in that there is a discussion going on. The fact that we have all these films. At yeah, the we have to. We have to talk about things done working. Uh, there is people doing films talking about uh, happy ending, and, and that is very well. And I love these films too. But but we have to have these other stories that can be in entertainment, but with a more deeper form. And can you quickly tell us what you're going to be working on next? Have you already got another project in the pipeline? I'm working in a, in a next film it's called La Llorona. La Llorona is a very, very famous uh, legend in America Latina. 
and talking about La Llorona mixing with the the recent history in Guatemala about all the people killed in the, in the war and this genocide happened in Guatemala that some people say that it wasn't a genocide and other people say that yes. Okay, well can't wait to see that as well. Um, Thank thanks so much for your time and congratulations again on a really wonderful powerful film. Thank you so much.